Lake Superior, the largest freshwater lake in the world, is clear, cold, and dazzlingly beautiful. Trout swim through its depths, and bald eagles soar along its shoreline here at McLean State Park in Michigan's Upper Peninsula. And yet this greatest of the Great Lakes has become a toxic sink for some of the most deadly pollutants. Mel Visser first fell in love with Lake Superior in 1956 when he was studying chemical engineering at nearby Michigan Technological University. He is the author of Cold, Clear, and Deadly, Unraveling a Toxic Legacy and works to raise awareness of pollution of North American air and waters from PCBs and banned pesticides. After the Second World War, tons of DDT and other insecticidal chemicals were sprayed across vast tracts of agricultural lands and wetlands, worming their way into the global food chain. Not until bird populations began to plummet did the United States government act to rein in their use. At the time, eagles, cormorants, and ospreys all but disappeared from the Great Lakes, including Superior. Uh, DDT is very toxic to birds and not very toxic to man. So uh, the resurgence of cormorants and eagles just means that we have done a much better job on the DDT and we haven't addressed some of the other pesticides. The government banned the use of DDT and other persistent organic pollutants by 1982, and their concentrations slowly dropped in most American waters. But despite massive cleanup efforts, the poisons persist in Lake Superior. Concentrations of deadly PCBs have fallen by only 50 percent, and levels of another banned pesticide, toxaphene, are actually rising. Well, in Lake Superior here, toxaphene is by far the worst and it's uh, still globally sourced and the global effort is to address dioxin and DDT and toxaphene is our worst problem in Lake Superior here and chlordane is actually the worst one in the Arctic. Lake Superior has the highest concentration of persistent organic pollutants or POPs in all of the Great Lakes. Its large lake trout contain 10 times the level of toxaphene that it would take to classify ordinary dirt as toxic waste. They bioaccumulate up through the fish chain, through the food chain of the fish, so they'd be at very low levels in the smelt, and then a little higher in the herring, uh, not bad in whitefish, but when you get to the trout, they uh, get pretty high. In fact, toxaphene levels are twice as high as the DDT levels. The lake is sending us a message. The fishermen here at Big Traverse Bay wondered how it could happen. After all, Lake Superior contains enough water to cover the continental United States with six feet of water. If it was being contaminated by agriculture and industry, where were the farms and factories? Lake Superior is ringed by rocks and trees. The pollutants then must be pouring in from another pipeline. As it turns out, our understanding of Superior can be informed by another remote, pristine place. In the high Arctic, the native Inuit people ingest more than 15 times the tolerable daily intake of a toxic cocktail including chlordane, toxaphene, and PCBs. Most of the poison comes from the mammal blubbers that they have eaten for centuries. Now, however, these blubbers contain enough pollutants to be classified as hazardous waste. And they're the people eat more, of course, too. You know, we have a recreational trout or a whitefish here, and that's not too bad. But the people in the small towns of the Arctic get 40% of their caloric energy from hunting and fishing. International researchers have found that Arctic POPs originate in developing countries where they are still freely available and travel north through the air. There's a lot of people that feel good because we're not the polluters, but <laughs> we're still eating it. Researchers have also found that certain chemicals are drawn to different latitudes. Toxaphene and chlordane love mountain lakes, the northern Great Lakes, and the Arctic. The only place they move toward is the Arctic, and if it gets warmer down here, all of the persistent organic pollutants will move north okay. in this hemisphere. That will mean that the toxaphene will move out of Lake Superior slowly, 
but PCBs will move in. In recent years, scientists have found that extremely low levels of POPs can also affect our endocrine and immune systems. Residents of the Arctic have compromised immune systems, fertility issues, high cancer rates, and shorter lifespans. Their lifespan is 10 years reduced. Their immune systems are compromised. Their children have, uh, a quarter of them have hearing problems mm -hmm. because of constant food and cold. The Alaskan cancer rate is higher than any state in the nation. There's just a whole lot of proof that the people that are getting high levels are, uh, are getting hurt real bad. Lake Superior is now the most toxic Great Lake. Meanwhile, Ontario and all the states surrounding Lake Superior have dropped toxifene from their fish consumption guidelines. Federal cleanup efforts focus on dredging contaminated dirt from the lower lakes, an exercise akin to replacing carpeting before fixing the hole in the roof. In the Arctic, the most toxic compounds, toxifene and chlordane, are no longer even measured. Decades ago, POPs were found to harm humans and devastate wildlife, and the U.S. and Canada led the global effort to ban them. Now, toxic poisons flow in from developing countries supplying cheap goods to the North American market, and Canada and the U.S. do nothing. Uh, dilution is no longer the solution to pollution with these chemicals because they travel around the world and then bioaccumulate. Medical scientists express surprise because they think these compounds have been banned. But they haven't been banned, and anywhere they're used in the northern hemisphere, they will pollute northern waters.